Okay, this is nuclear chemistry, the last unit, the last lesson. It's been a long year, but it's coming to an end. And after this, we will just have lessons on review. There are a couple of lessons out there, too, already on Regents Review, and I will be doing another one later today. So we're going to finish this last lesson with a review of half-life problems, graphing half-life, and some important radioisotopes that you should know. So in our last lesson, we were talking about solving half-life problems, so I thought that we would start this lesson with a review of some of the skills that we've learned so far. So in these two problems that we're going to do, when you don't have these in your notes, you can certainly write these down on a piece of scrap paper. We are going to write the transmutation equation. We're going to determine the mass of the radioisotope left after the given length of time. We're going to write the name of the new isotope that the original isotope has become. So it says chlorine 36 undergoes beta decay. So we know that the mass is 36 and if we look up chlorine it has an atomic number of 17. It tells us it's beta decay which is um, it's releasing an electron 0, negative 1, E and then we have to determine what the new element will be. Remember that the mass and charge on both sides of the arrow must be equal to one another. So this has to be 36 because an electron has a mass of 0 and this has to be 18 because 18 and negative 1 is 17. If we look up element 18 we find out that it is argon. Okay, now we have to figure out the mass of the radioisotope left after the given length of time. So we're starting with 1600 grams. This is our initial mass and they want to know how much will be left after 1,200,000 years if the half-life is 400,000 years. So if we take 1,200,000 which is our total time elapsed and we divide it by the half-life which is 400,000 this comes out to be 3. So 1,200,000 divided by 400,000 is 3 half lives. So that's what we've undergone. And we know that a half life is the amount of time it takes for one half of the sample to decay. So if I'm starting with 1,600 grams, after one half life, I'm left with 800 grams. After a second half life, I'm left with 400 grams. And after a third half life, I'm left with 200 grams. So this arrow represents my first half-life, my second half-life, and my third half-life. So I've got 200 grams of Cl36 remaining. And they wanted to know the name of the new element and we determined that that was 3618 argon. Okay, let's look at another one. Sodium 24 undergoes beta decay as well. So Na is the symbol for sodium 24 and we know that the atomic number for sodium is 11. It undergoes beta decay which is it's emitting an electron. So my mass is still 24 and my new atomic number is 12. 12 and negative 1 is 11 which means that this is going to be magnesium. It says I'm starting with 2400 grams and they want to know how much will be left after 90 hours if the half-life is 15 hours. So I've got a total time of 90 hours divided by 15. 15 goes into 90 six times because 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3, 6 plus 3 is 9. So 6 half-lives take place. They want to know how much will be left. Well, if I'm starting with 2,400 grams, half of that is 1,200, half of that is 600, half of that is 300, half of that is 150, half of that is 75, Let's go back and see how many I've gone through. It's one half life, two, 
three, four, five. Oh, I need one more. So half of 75 is going to be 37.5 grams. And that's of the Na24 remaining. And they want to know the name of the new isotope. We said that that was 2412 magnesium. Okay, so that just is a review of writing decay equations and solving half-life problems, which is probably the more difficult part of this unit. Graphing half-life data. How do we detect something we can't see, like the decay of a radioactive isotope? As a radioactive isotope decays, something called a Geiger counter can be used to record the individual decay events. It consists of a metal tube filled with argon or neon and is kept at low pressure. Into the center of this tube is a wire that has been anchored with high voltage set up between the wire and the tube. When ionizing particles enter this tube, it ionizes the entrapped gas and causes an electrical pulse. By adding up the number of pulses, the intensity of radiation can be detected. So as a radioisotope decays, the longer it's been decaying, the fewer the pulses that will be picked up. When the data from a Geiger counter is graphed, it can be used to determine the half-life of an isotope. So here's some typical data that you might get after you graph um, the information. So you have amount versus time for a particular substance. So this is the amount over here in grams and this is the time. So it says draw a vertical line anywhere from one y value on the curve to half of its y value. So for example, let's take this point right here, 50. So 50, half of 50 is 25, which is right here. So that's this point. And then I'm going to draw a 90 degree horizontal line to the time. So down to here. So this looks like it's about 25 days. So the half-life for the substance here is 25 days. Now, it doesn't matter what I pick. Let's pick a different spot. Let's pick this spot right here. Let's start with 25. And half of 25 is 12.5. So now I'm going from 25 to 12.5. So at 25 it was 25 days and at 12.5 it's 50 days. So the difference again is 25 days. So we have established that our half-life is 25 days. Some present day uses of particular isotopes. These are some of these are important. Iodine 131 is used for thyroid and cancer treatment. This has a half life of about 8.07 days. Therefore, it doesn't stay in the body long and it's it's used as a biomedical tracer. So if they think that something's going on with your thyroid, they can give you some iodine 131 and watch where it travels in your body. Technetium-99 is used in bone scans. Cobalt-60 is used for cancer treatment. That's kind of important as far as like the regions knowing these. Definitely have to know carbon-14 is used for dating, and I'm not talking about um, dinner and wine. I'm talking about radioactive dating, carbon dating, determining how old a geological fossil is. And then uranium-235 
238 to lead 206 is used for nuclear energy. Okay, that's it. Have a great day.